here with RC Illuminati. Um, exciting day, Sledge release day is finally upon us. And unfortunately, uh, we may have an issue already. Nothing serious, uh, tune in, I'm gonna show you guys exactly what it is and how to fix it. Super easy, shouldn't take you more than a couple minutes and you don't need anything more than the uh, tools that come with the sledge and two small O-rings to fix this. And uh, I highly recommend doing this before you take this out and run it for the first time. If not, you could have some mm, fairly serious issues with this thing, uh, issues that you've probably seen in some other videos. So check it out. I'm gonna show you guys real quick how to take care of this and hopefully uh, catch it before it becomes a serious problem. So let's check it out. So here is the problem, and I noticed this um, yesterday when I was just messing around with, uh, I was actually just playing around throwing some different wheels on the truck, and just to see what it looked like and what fit, and I noticed um, kind of an excessive amount of play in these rear dog bones. And you could see how the inner drive cup, um, I don't know if it's, it has a longer slot, but it definitely has more room, more kind of wiggle room. So when you press this toward the wheel, uh, when you slide it toward the wheel, it's still captured in there between the slots um, pretty well. When you slide it in, see how close it comes to the edge there? And that's even worse. Uh, I'm gonna try to get a good shot of this, but when the pins are in the vertical position like that, and when the dog bone is slid in toward the center diff, um, or, or the uh, the rear diff. See how far out? That's just literally compressing the rear shock, and you know, kind of topping out the suspension here. You see how far out that top pin? It comes pretty much entirely out of that um, top slot in the uh, drive cup. So what's going to happen, and what I've seen, and probably what you guys have seen on some videos, is guys popping these dog bones out. Um, I even saw one where a guy snapped one of the dog bones, which I'm going to guess happened because it popped out and got jammed up in here somehow. And if, then if you're staying on a throttle or you land hard, even on the brake, uh, there's a lot of torque going on in this area. If one of these pins is sticking out, it's going to try to rotate it. It'll pop it right out of this, this drive cup. So I'm thinking that that's definitely what's been happening with these. Um, I think even in the, the Kevin Talbot video, he, he ended up bending one which yeah it could happen just from it flexing and, and stuff but i'm guessing it kind of probably half popped out and just kind of twisted itself and bent um and this is even more exaggerated when these arms flex so imagine you're in this position um and you have like a really crooked landing and you land hard on the rear one rear wheel and it completely compresses and then the arm flexes up even more that's definitely going to pop out so my solution um, last night when I had this apart is I took an O-ring and uh, I slid it in. I'll show you real quick here. I took a uh, small O-ring. I have a kit that I picked up at Harbor Freight. comes with like a, a ton of O-rings. And this is basically just a... Um, I think on the kit it shows it uh, as like a 10.5 outer diameter. Um, but I'd say anything around a 10 or 11, maybe even 12 millimeter, you can kind of stick it in there. It doesn't need to be ultra precise. And um, it just slides into you. You have to remove, and I'm going to show you in a minute exactly how to do this. Remove the wheel. You remove one screw. The hub pivots down, and then you get to this. Uh, the dog bones comes right out. You take the O-ring, push it into the cup, reassemble it, and literally you could do both sides within like it probably take you like three minutes. Once you see how it's done, you'll see how easy it is. Um, <clears throat> it's funny because I did this last night. I posted uh, something on a Facebook group and uh just to see if any other guys were having this issue and then i saw this morning that a main posted a video up with them uh, on their first run with the the sledge and they had this exact issue the dog bone kept popping out and they noticed the same thing and their fix was to cut a small piece of um fuel line tubing and what they did was they stuck it on both sides and i don't really agree with that fix because the issue is not on this inner drive cup it never comes out far enough to be, become an issue there. It's always um, on the uh, the hub side. So they put one on both sides. I don't really agree with that. I wouldn't put anything on this side. If anything, you want this dog bone to be out as far as possible. So only put something on the inside. And like I said, whatever it is, if you don't have an O-ring like this floating around somewhere um, and you really want to get out and run this truck, 
I'd recommend find something, cut a little piece of tubing if you have it. Um, hell, even if you balled up a little piece of uh, like duct tape or electrical tape and kind of jammed it in the back there. Uh, anything to keep this, this um, dog bone out away from the diff uh, will help. And you don't want to, you don't want to have it so, whatever you put in there, you don't want it so thick that you don't get any play at all because then what happens is you're going to be putting pressure on the bearings. Uh, you'll be forcing like a side load into the bearing. So you want a little bit of play, especially like some wiggle room when the arms flex and you're going to get like, you know, you could get some debris and some crud in there. You really don't want this thing binding up. You need a little bit of play and check it with the arms um, kind of parallel to the ground, like just straight across so that um, that's going to be the distance where you have the least amount of play. So um, check it like that. But let me show you guys real quick how to do this. I'm going to do this on the... Uh, the left side here and uh but you can see the difference see this is the amount of play on the one that has the o-ring that's the amount of play on the one that doesn't have the o-ring and interesting thing is um someone pointed out it actually pointed out on the a main video that traxxas i guess revised the um <clears throat> the parts list and the exploded view and it now shows two o-rings in this exact position on either of the inner drive uh, output drive cups so they must know it's a problem i don't know if it was there from the start and maybe it was an assembly issue or maybe they didn't realize they had to put these in to to take care of this issue and maybe they kind of revised it last minute but if you look up this part number, I believe it was 8960, I'll double check it. Um, when you search it on the Traxxas site, nothing comes up. When you Google it, nothing comes up. Um, it seems like this doesn't exist yet in uh, Traxxas inventory, but it's a super simple fix. Go to the hardware store, go to Home Depot, Lowe's, whatever. You can find O-rings this size. Like I said, just find something that's 10, 11 millimeters. Obviously the thickness comes into play. If you go find something, Pardon uh, my dog's barking there, but if you could find something a little bit thicker, like I said, you can kind of, you know, even maybe have a little less play than that, but this is kind of just like a standard thickness O-ring. So um, find something like that, pop it in there and you'll be good to go. So let me show you guys exactly how to do so, that. So again, I'm just gonna show you guys, maybe you don't have access to tools. Uh, maybe you just picked up the car, you're in the, on your way home from work and you want to stop, with, stop off somewhere and run it. Um, you can use the tools that came with the car to take care of this. I try to do this uh, one-handed here, but just loosen up the uh, hex nut on the wheel here. Be a little jiggly for a minute here, but uh, oh, sorry. There we go. Wheels off. Now all you need to do, I'm just going to use this because it's handy, but you can use uh, the 2.5 mil that comes with the kit. You're going to remove this top uh, camber link screw. And just, you know, pay attention. There are three positions here. Uh, stock position is in the outer hole. Uh, now, one thing I will say, they give you three positions here. For one thing, I don't know why you would want to change the camber that much anyway. You always want it to be kind of cambered in a little bit. Um, and that's just going to move it out. But if you were to put it in any of these two positions, this issue would be even worse because now the hub is further away from the diff. And this is really going to be sticking out. So definitely don't mess with that at all, probably ever. Honestly, I don't think it's really going to do much for handling. And it's definitely going to cause more of an issue with this. So um, anyway, just remove this screw, pop that out. This is going to slide out. And boom, simple as that. You almost can't stop it from coming apart. So here's your dog bone. Uh, you really can't mix this up. Both sides are the same. Um, and you can see here the pin, this is, this is the issue is I'll show you real close up here that, um, when that arm, and let's try to get it this way, but yeah, when that arm flexes up all the way, that pin is sticking out, you know, pretty much about that much. And there's really not much holding it in position when it rotates, you know, you see it even comes further out. So when you have like a real, like a lot of torque on this. You come down, you know, hard from a uh, landing of a jump, it's, it's, there's a lot of force going through this. So it's definitely going to twist its way out if it's not fully seated in both slots. So that's your main issue. So anyway, I said, we're going to take this O-ring, um, and let me see, I get some light going on here. So take this O-ring, um, you don't really need to, I don't think put any kind of grease on it or anything. And of course I just dropped it. 
Sorry, this is, I'm kind of doing this video in a little bit of a rush here on my lunch break. Just wanted to get this out here before, uh, before you guys go out and run this car, all excited for the, for the release day, run your car and end up breaking it. And then we see all kinds of complaints about how this sledge is a piece of crap. And it's really all comes down to two silly little O-rings. Um, honestly, I'm surprised Traxxas um, missed this, you know, because it's kind of important. So anyway, you just pop that in there and then you could take, um, if it's not fully seated, take the dog bone itself and kind of just, you know, tap it in there a little bit and uh, make sure it's in place. And you could even, if you rotate it, um, you could even see, let me try to point with this, you could even see the O-ring kind of sticking out right there. So I don't know exactly what size the O-ring is that Trax is suspecting, the 8960. Um, I'm assuming it's gonna be about this size. Uh, so what I'm thinking is you guys can inspect this, get a, get a light, use the light from your phone, whatever, a nice bright light, take a peek in there and see if you see anything. But you could even see, like you saw earlier in the video, how much that was sliding back and forth. You could assist, it's, the easiest way to check this is just slide this back and forth. If it's if it's very little movement and you see like a little O-ring sitting in there, you're probably good to go. Maybe they caught this early enough where um, the, the car is getting shipped later on, um, had this in place, um, but maybe not. Again, it's not worth taking the risk. Double check this. It's a super easy fix. Um, as I said earlier, if you guys don't have an O-ring, I would literally like take some freaking electrical tape and ball it up like a little spitball and just jam it in the back there just so you have just the right amount of um, play. Like anything, you know, if you're just going to go out and run this for one or two battery packs, you can put anything you want in there. And as long as you think it's going to hold up, you know, to uh, a couple runs just to take up that play. Um, and that's pretty much it. So then you just want to take your... Uh, your hub here and get the camber link out of the way here and uh, you're just going to re reassemble it in uh, reverse order here just line everything up and um, you know like I said put this make sure when you put the link back you put it in the outer hole I'm going to do that real quick off camera and um, yeah give me a second I'll do that and then I'll talk about uh, just a couple other things um, I'm going to do to this before I run it for the first time but as far as uh, I'm concerned, this is a mandatory to do before you run this because if this thing pops out, you could run into some serious issues. And I've had this, and this isn't anything, I know some of you guys might be thinking, oh, why did Traxxas design this like this, blah, blah, blah. This is extremely standard in the uh, RC world. Pretty much every Arma 6S that I know of comes with this exact setup with the dog bones in the rear. Your fronts are actually different because with the steering, uh, it puts too much of an angle to use this type of uh, dog bone cup. You know, it does use that on the inner, but on the outer, it has a CV style, which has more of like a captured pin, which just allows a greater um, angle for that joint to work at. So that's why they use it on the front. So on the front, you're not gonna really be concerned about any movement here. Um, what I will say this, and I've had issues with um, Armas in the past, is if your bearings, if these bearings in the uh, hub get really worn out and they start to really kind of get a ton of play in them, the entire um, stub axle can push outwards a little bit. And what that allows, even on your front, even though it's captured up here by the hub, it could allow this um, dog bone to slide out in the front and then start spinning around and really tear everything up. Um, so keep an eye on that. Definitely keep an eye on your bearings. And that just goes for all RC cars, you know, when you have any drive drivetrain bearings, when they get really worn out um, and they decide to let loose, it can really create a lot of damage. So keep an eye on that. But um, again, on this car, um, so Traxxas lists the part. And I know this is turning into a longer video than I thought, but anyway, hopefully it's uh, helpful and you guys are sticking with me. But Traxxas lists this part in the parts list. On the exploded view, they only show two, and one goes here, one goes there. On the parts list, they list it as um, using six. For some reason, it has the, the, the number six next to it. I'm not sure if that's really just because it comes in a pack of six, and that's the least you could buy. I would assume that's how they're doing it. Um, but nowhere else on the parts diagram does it show these O-rings, so you don't need to do this on the front, um, and you surely don't need to do this on the um, hub side here. So it's just on the inside. Again, you want to keep these dog bones pushed outwards and not inwards. So let me get this back together and uh, we'll go over a few uh, a few other things. Okay, so back together, it really is that easy. 
Uh, I mean, you can literally do this if you pick up your car today and um, you notice this, pull it out of the box right away, notice this. Um, while you're at the hobby shop, see if they have something that's going to um, work. Now, what I looked at was, um, and I had these for my, I bought these when I, I, I had a Mojave, I turned into Italian, and uh, I did have some issues um, in the past with the dog bones popping out. And I noticed that Arma makes these little um, outdrive inserts, and they pretty much do exactly what the O-ring did. These are a little bit more like molded to fit properly into that cup. Um, would be very cool if Traxxas came out with something like this. Maybe the O-rings are just like a temporary fix, or um, I don't think these will fit. I think these are a little too small. I didn't try them, uh, but they definitely look too small for these uh, outdrive cups. But anyway, uh, it would be cool if you guys that have 3D printers, if you could design something like this, something that just fits nice and snug into the cup um, and really takes up all that play, you know, maybe print it out of like a somewhat flexible material, something that's going to have good like wear resistance. My one concern with using the O-rings is that over time, uh, you do get a lot of dirt and debris in here that's just going to chew up these O-rings. And if, you know, O-rings do tend to kind of snap pretty easily. And if that happens and it flies out, um, you're going to be right back into the same situation. And you might, if it's happening like mid run, you may not notice it until it's too late and the dog bone flies out or snaps or whatever. So I don't know. That's kind of remains to be seen. I'm not sure how well these are going to hold up, but I'm definitely going to be keeping an eye on these. And it's super easy to do, you know, just again, anytime you change your batteries or anything, just take your finger and wiggle this back and forth. If you notice a ton of play, that means your O-ring's probably shot. Um, so you want to change it out. But anyway, um, let me get on to some other things here. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, uh, what I'm planning on doing later before I run this, I just want to take a peek at the uh, center diff. So I'm going to pull out the center diff and just make sure that it is um, full, uh, as full as it needs to be. Um, again, just to kind of reduce the chances of getting some... Uh, pizza cutters going on at the front when it diffs out. And also, um, just because I noticed on uh, Kev's video too that his pinion came loose, um, that's something I never really leave to chance. I always check that on every every car I get. Um, just pull the uh, grub screw out and make sure it has some good Loctite. I mean, I like to use red so that if and when I need to uh, change it, I just know that it's you know semi-permanent and I have to use some heat I use a little soldering iron and just put the tip in the grub screw, heat it up, and uh, it's easy enough to get out that way. So I'd rather deal with that headache of getting it out than have it come off when I don't want it to. So I think that's about it, guys. I, I really kind of went over everything else on this truck real quick just to check all the uh, kind of nuts and bolts. And um, yeah, everything seemed to be you know very well built and you know nicely put together. Um, I noticed that the rear shocks didn't really have enough preload that if you fully extended it, the springs were loose. So you guys might want to keep an eye on that and just kind of, you know, snug up the preload adjuster so that there's no play. And, you know, from there you can start doing your shock tuning if you want. You can set it a little bit tighter. The fronts were okay. Um, but yeah, other than that, uh, everything looks good to go, man. It's really a nice, nice looking RC. It, it's just very well designed and very well put together. And um, yeah, I can't wait to run this thing. So that's it guys. Uh, hopefully you see super easy fix. Don't be discouraged and think that this new car has a major issue right from the start because um, all new releases have some kind of minor um, annoyance. So take care of it before you drive it. It's not gonna become an issue before you do any kind of serious damage. And um, yeah, as soon as I get any more uh, info on this truck, I will uh, post up another vid and let you guys know what I find. And then hopefully this weekend, get it out and uh, take it for a rip. And uh, I'll try to get some video of that for you guys too. So um, tune in for uh, any future videos and uh, thanks for watching.